Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers, and this is part three of the Powerful Toolbar. Uh, as you know, the toolbar is content sensitive, so anytime you click one of the tools on the left, the toolbar changes up on the top. So if you missed part one and two, the links are below. You should watch that so you get the full picture. So this time we're going to be focusing on the paintbrush toolbar. So let's get started. Okay, so let's just open a new document. Uh, I'll just pick any document, doesn't really matter. And we're going to click on the paintbrush. And on the paintbrush, the obvious ones everybody knows is width of the pixels. I have a soft brush picked. Let me find my brushes. I just have a soft brush like that, so that's 200 pixels. So if I paint it like that, it's just like that. Uh, you can I'll undo that. You can shrink it this way if you want your thing to be smaller, if you want your width of your brush smaller, but I never use that anyway. Uh, you can, but it's so much easier if you use the left and right brackets here. I'm clicking the right back bracket and I'm clicking the left bracket. So if I wanted to click the right bracket and then I'm painting and then I can go down with the left bracket and it does the same thing. So that's the width and everybody knows about that. Uh, nothing special there, but I figured we're going through the whole tube. Well, everyone sh should, you should see how it all works. Next is going to be the opacity. So once, let's just get some color here so we can see what's going on. Uh, let's make it blue and we'll make it wider. I'm, I'm using my brackets, but I could use this. So I think we should also be 100%. So now if I go like that, that's one thing. Now, if I want to cross it, you, right in the middle, it looks exactly the same. But if I change the color of my brush and want to cross it again, right here, it's red on top of blue. But if I change the opacity now, I'll bring it way down and go across. Now you have a mixture of the blue and the red because the red has a, a lighter opacity and you could see through it. So it's kind of a little bit like a, a watercolor or painting overlapping, even, even markers maybe. Um, so let's see what else we have here. Flow is a little bit different. Uh, flow kind of fades in and out. Like instead of it being a solid here, let's take the opacity back to 100. And flow kind of just fades around as opposed to full. It's, it's, it's such a subtle difference. There, it just lightens up as you go along. And it's probably better when you use a tablet on flow. But let's just leave that. And hardness also. Um, I'm using a very soft brush, which has a, a fuzzy edge around it, very soft. And hardness, I'll go hard. And now it's, now it's absolutely a solid color with hard edges. So those are the ones that most people know about. I like to stay on soft brush. So let me delete that layer and let's paint something else so we can get a new layer. in. And let's see what's next. More. I'm not going to really go into more. More basically is showing you brush selection and dynamics, for example. And I could do like all kinds of things like this. But that's a whole nother tutorial and it's on its own. So I'm not going to go into that. That'll be, and many other people have had tutorials on this. So I'm just going to skip that one right now. Right here is force pressure control. That's really when you have a tablet. So let me see if I go like that and then I go like that. It's different. It thinks it's different pressure, but without a tablet, it's useless as far as I'm concerned, you know? So. You should keep that off if you don't have a tablet. So let's um, let's delete all of that stuff I just did, and we'll just click something else here. So we have a pixel layer again, and we're back to paintbrush. Uh, now we get to more fun type of things. The stabilizer. If you go like that, without the stabilizer, it just goes exactly where you're 
uh, we, I'm using a mouse. It's probably better with a pen, but it goes exactly where I put the mouse. It's very, not very smooth, but if you click the stabilizer on, it kind of drags it so it's not as rough. And you can make the, the tail much longer so it'll even be smoother. See that? So when I go like that, it's a smoother dragging as opposed to a sharp thing. And then also, if you want it even smoother than that, you would click on this, which says it's a Windows mode. It's averaged out. So when you average it out, it's even smoother on the corners especially. It, it's, it's not as sharp on the corners. Let's get a hard one just so we can show you kind of. See, let me get another color. I'm making a mess here, but that's okay. I just want to show you how it works. Like that's like that. And if we went, if we were out any stabilizer, and I probably did the same thing, it kind of like cuts shorter as opposed to a smoother roundness to it. And the lengths, again, if, if I'm back on stabilizer, the longer the length, I'll put another layer here and hide that. The longer the length, the smoother it gets, but there's a point where you can't be too long because it gets ridiculous after a while. But you see how smooth that is? Because it's dragging like as if it was on a rope, so you're not cutting it so short. So that's what stabilizer does. I'm turning that off now. Let's get rid of that. And we'll get rid of that, and we'll just add a new layer. And next on the brush, is symmetry. Symmetry is always fun. Let's put the lock on first. I'll explain the lock in a minute. See lock right here? And symmetry is exactly what it's saying. Right now I have one. If I had symmetry turned off, I'm painting one. If I add symmetry on it, I'm adding one more. So for example, let me make this brush smaller. Uh, whatever I do here, is whatever I want to do is the same no matter where I go. And that's two parts. So let's undo that. Then the second one is I can actually do as many as I want. For example, now I can do that. Or I can make a flower. Kind of. <laughs> and if you unlock it, if you, if you keep it unlocked, you can accidentally hit that middle point and move it. So I kept it locked so it's always in the middle. But now what if I want to grab that middle point right there. Let me see if I'm doing this right. And move it somewhere else and then lock it again. Well, I could do kind of the same idea, but only in another position. So that's, that's what symmetry is. Okay, let's start a new layer and turn symmetry on again. And we'll unlock that and we'll grab the middle just to see. Let's go back to where it was. And let's, instead of, this is without mirror. Let's do less so you can see what we're doing. Let's do three. That's without mirror. And then if I click mirror and I do the same thing, it's going the opposite way. You see how they're coming to each other? It may be easier to see if you did one here. Uh, without mirror, I, I'm going on opposite sides. And with mirror, I'm actually just looking like I'm drawing on top of a mirror. If I had a sheet of paper up here and a mirror facing it down here, that's what mirror is. So that's, that's what symmetry is. And you can come up with some very interesting designs on symmetry. Okay, next, let's delete this and a new pixel layer. And next is on the paintbrush, let's see. Uh, blend modes, we all know about blend modes, but the interesting part about blend modes here is it works, it doesn't work with the layer itself. When I put a blend mode here, it's the whole layer. But for example, I can do this, right? And then let's give it another color. And then I could do this. And then the next one, like let's say I gave it a green. And the next one, instead, I'm going to put my blend mode to, uh, I don't know, luminosity maybe. And you see the difference? 
It did not change the blend mode of the other paint strokes, and it did not change the blend mode on the layer, but it changed the blend mode just while I was drawing at that moment. So as I'm drawing there, and then if I change it, say, to something else, let's try uh, overlay. Overlay, well, it's almost the same. Let's try something else. If I try vivid light, you see how that changed? But it did not affect the last one I did. It only affects the brush you were working on at the moment that that says vivid light. So even if I go back to normal, that brush does not turn back to normal. Only the next time I use it, it does. So that's blend mode. Uh, let's do another layer. Let's get hide that one. OK, let's do wet edges now. So let's pick a color. And we're back to the paintbrush. We'll close that. And you see how the edges, let me get a close up of that. Hold on. See how the edges are darker? That's wet edges. And I don't know what happens as we change the hardness, but wet edges, the inside is kind of see-through. I'll go softer and see what the difference is there. The inside is kind of see-through, but the outside is darker. If that's what they consider wet edges. Now, here's one I really like. It's Protect Alpha. Protect Alpha, if that's clicked on on top of here, let's say I have a brush now. Let's get a different color, a, a dark color. Okay, so now I have the color red, and I'm about to paint something. I'll even go out a little. Protecting Alpha means anything that was see-through, and all this is see-through because that layer only has this on it. As long as that layer is selected, it doesn't matter where I paint. I can only paint where that is. So protecting the alpha is great if you needed to change something and you didn't want to go outside the line. That's a perfect way to do it. Look at that. That's a beautiful way to paint. So you can get, if you want to do stripes on this, you could have just done like that. So there's a lot of good features when you use protect alpha. So I think, I think we've hit everything, and I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please click like and subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll get notified each time I put up another tutorial on this toolbar because I plan on doing one for everything. Just remember, every single time you click something, it's different. So you might be interested in all the things the toolbar can do. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and have a good day.